Um, so uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and members of the Council. This is our eighth reoccurring monthly update on homelessness and the homeless services that are provided by our City of Santa Ana. So I have a short PowerPoint that will be appearing briefly. Tonight I'm really going to talk about four items, give you a brief update on Colt, which is our quality of life team, talk a little bit about the SMART program, and then share some more details of the Orange um, County point and time count, and then really focus on talking about our navigation center, which now is housing homeless individuals. So starting with the, uh, the outreach numbers for our quality of life team, this past month, uh, May, they made contact with 368 different individuals that are experiencing homelessness providing outreach services as well as enforcement action when necessary. They conducted 426 cleanups of various sizes. Um, they also performed 133 arrests or issued citations for various offenses and placed or assisted in the placement of 45 individuals into a shelter. So they did have a very busy month. Moving on to SMART, which is our Santa Ana multidisciplinary homeless response team. As you can see from the chart, you can see some of the numbers and stats since we started this program, along with the red dots, which shows that they are operating throughout the entire city. Uh, this is a team that, uh, thanks to your leadership, you did increase the hours. It is a team that operates seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. They respond to reports that individuals make on My Santa Ana app, and then also the phone number. You can call directly as well. They take those calls. And then there is an automatic diversion from 911 to the smart teams based on the information that the caller is providing to the dispatchers. Um, the chart displays the activities uh, from December 2021 up through June 15th. And to date, the team has had 3,315 outreach contacts, responded to over 5,200 calls from dispatch, and as noted on the screen, over 523 individuals have been assisted in exiting the streets of Santa Ana. Uh, for the month of May, CityNet exited 72 individuals off the streets, and of this number, 58 individuals went to various emergency shelters, and four went home to family, and four went to hospitals, and six had other types of exits. Now pivoting to the point in time count, we did talk briefly about this in the last homeless update that you had, but we have some more, more numbers that we want to share with you. So overall, the count shows that the number of people experiencing homelessness in the entire county fell by 17% from 2019. That number was 6,860, and as a result of this last point in time count, it's 5,718. Um, we do attribute that to the number of increase in shelter beds throughout the entire county, as well as an increase in wraparound services. And in fact, 1,500 emergency shelter beds and over 400 units of permanent supportive housing have opened since the 2019 homeless count. Uh, several cities have launched or increased street outreach as well to help bring unhoused individuals indoors. And the 2022 point in time count showed the fastest growing unhoused population across the county is in the area of adults over the age of 50. There are some subpopulations also depicted on the screen. Um, one of the significant success stories has been in the areas of veterans. So you'll see that of that subpopulation, it's dropped all the way down to 280 individuals. They break down the information by unsheltered and shelter. So the next slide shows you the unsheltered population count for the entire county, and then it is broken up by service planning area. Our city is located in the central planning area, which is the, the beige one in the middle. Um, there is still more detailed information coming out city by city, and I certainly will bring that back to share with you. But in the unsheltered number of individuals, there was a drop from 3,961 to the 3,057 depicted on for the 22 count. The sheltered totals for all Orange County also decreased, but it was a much smaller decrease than what your decrease was in your unsheltered. Diving into a little more specific to Santa Ana, we've put on the slide a bar chart that shows you of the last four times counts were performed. That includes three of the Orange County point in time counts and then the one that the city of Santa Ana did on their own. And as you can see in both the sheltered and unsheltered count, we've had significant declines. 
Now to talk about the homeless shelter, our navigation center. Um, it is. It opened its doors. We did a very slow rollout, and we transitioned individuals over. We started with addressing some of the women that were on the street, and initially transferred five women into it. But as of June 6, it pretty much is open for business, and individuals that we were housing at other locations have now been transitioned over to our homeless center. So, as of today, June. Well, sorry, as of June 16th, not today. We do have 80 individuals that are residing in it and the breakdown is we have males of 45 females 35 we have parents of three children of seven and the important pets of eight so that is one thing that's really unique about the city shelter is that we can accommodate all of those populations in segregated areas uh, the picture over to the right that was taken at a kickoff meeting just prior to the opening and depicted in there is a lot of our partners that work very hard on this issue for us the next slide will show you a little sneak peek of the inside of it. Um, you can see the dining hall, the family lounge area, and we hope that everyone that enters the beautiful Santa Ana Navigation Center will be motivated to start something new in their life and trust the magic of new beginnings. Um, we did not do a ribbon cutting. We were more focused on transitioning homeless into it, but I certainly would offer and extend to each of you, please contact it. We'll be more than happy to do a, a single tour of you if you'd like to walk through it. And a lot of us spent some time in the end of May. We had a volunteer day on Saturday, getting that ready to open up. And uh, many of your employees were all there and we were assembling beds and setting up chairs and it was, it was quite an experience. So that is the conclusion of the homeless presentation and we're available to answer any questions. And then you do have another update scheduled at your next council meeting as well. Great, thank you. Uh, for that update. Let me go ahead and bring it back to the council to see if there are any questions or comments on this presentation. Any members of the council have any questions or comments on this? Seeing, oh, council member Lopez. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Sarmiento. And I wanna start off by thanking staff um, for working um, around the clock um, to accomplish this new shelter and get it built and get it um, up and running for uh, the unhoused community here in the city of Santa Ana. I also wanna make a suggestion, you know, I use CityNet a lot, um, and when we call the number for CityNet, it'll ring, 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 and then it'll tell you press one for English or two for Spanish, and I wanna know if they can just say that at the very beginning, there's no need for people to wait on the phone. Um, I think it'll make the call a lot shorter. Um, also, uh, Another thing that staff and I are aware about in Ward 3 and we're keeping our eye on is that there's been an increase of, of people in the area that are not the regular folks that we're used to interacting and servicing. And so we are trying to research and find out what the uptick is about. We don't know if it's because something else closed in another city and so people are now migrating over to Santa Ana. Um, but as soon as we have more information, staff, um, I'm gonna ask staff uh, to relay that information to Ward 3 residents. So you're not necessarily gonna get that from me anymore, but staff will be sending out that information. So hopefully my colleagues can support that. Um, and I don't know if, if you need a motion for that, Christine, or something. Okay, thank you. Thank you, any other? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor Sarmiento. Um, in your slides, you, you talked about 523 street exits. Um, what does that exactly mean? I believe you're referring to the slide, Mayor Pro Tem, on the SMART team, and it's 523 individuals have been assisted in exiting the streets cumulatively from the time that we started the SMART program. And it can be a whole variety of things. It can be they were placed in emergency shelter. It can be that they were united with family members. It could be they were um, assisted to transition into a sober living home. Uh, those are the most typical types okay. of street exits, but the bottom line is they're not on the street unsheltered. No, and I appreciate that. I just wanted to get an idea just to make sure what exactly that statistic meant. Um, in regards to the SMART team, I, I've said it at other council meetings, and you know, in between that last time and today, I'm still getting a lot of complaints. You know, people really want to try to use it. They, they understand the purpose of it to divert calls away from PD so that PD can go after criminals. And for folks that really just need assistance, the idea is that the SMART team would do it. But I, I keep getting story after story about 
you know, they, they've called, it's been long response times. In fact, that was something that was missing from your report tonight was have the response times decreased or increased? I'm gonna bet money they probably increased because frankly, you know, when I talk about the My Santa Ana app, oh my gosh, that's, you know, everybody loves it. Everybody says how responsive it is and how wonderful it works. I literally get the exact opposite when talking about the smart team. People are not happy about it. They don't see the response. And it's not that they expect, you know, instant results as far as, you know, the person they interact with is going to automatically accept services. But it's the fact that people call and they just want to see the response. And there's just a whole litany of reasons. I mean, I know that when Councilmember Lopez is talking about the delay and actually having somebody pick up, or even just that automated press one for English and two for Spanish, I've had personally on a couple of instances where it just rang and rang and rang and nobody picked up, and it's very frustrating. So, I something's got to be done here, you know. And Sandy is doing the same thing over and over. And this smart team, for whatever reason, I, I want to keep giving it a chance, but it just is not working with my residents. Um, so, Mayor Pro Tem, we did give the average response time when uh, Ken Gamitsky gave his presentation last time. I, sorry, I can't recall what it was. Um, there have been some hiccups, and we've been making adjustments along the way. I think one of the biggest education factors is if there is an emergency situation with a homeless, do call 911. I mean, the police will be even the first ones to tell you that. This is uh, dispatching social service workers and outreach workers, so it isn't an instant, you know, emergency response to them, so it's not as quick as that. So it should be used for those instances when our residents see a homeless individual that looks like they're in need on the streets, but it's not intended to be um, at the same pace as an emergency response, such as a law enforcement officer. So if it is, if someone's in immediate danger, whether it's the homeless individual or they're threatening another individual, this isn't the line to call. You should still call 911. No, and I understand that, and I think a lot of people understand that. The problem is they'll call on somebody who is not violent, who does not pose a threat, which means they wouldn't call the police department. So <clears throat> they call hoping that someone will come out and offer services, but unless the homeless person is dead asleep or, or unable to move, sometimes they pick up and they move. And so when the calls are made, you know, maybe the homeless person walks away, you know, and they're walking so they don't get that far, but when um, the smart team is dispatched, they arrive at a site, if they don't see the person, they, they don't do a lap around just to see if maybe the person went five minutes one direction or another. They, immediately check the box and they move on to the next call. And so I think there's a lot of frustration because when people don't see the response, and you could say, well, that's not the intention, but realize the end user, they're not waiting for us to, I mean, they're trying to work with us, but at the same time, when they don't get that result, they're gonna go right back to what they've been doing, which is calling PD, and they're anticipating some sort of resolution to the call. And again, I think a lot of people wanna give this program a chance because I think many of us that interact with the homeless recognize that many of them are not posing a threat and they don't warrant uh, a police officer interacting with them, but something has to be done to, I think, improve the response time. Again, I understand it's not immediate, but I, this is, there's a difference between an emergency reaction, like quick, get somebody out here, somebody's in danger, versus let's get somebody out here because we wanna get this person help. There was a person in my ward that, and I wanna give uh, thanks to our cult team for this, where there were interactions of multiple occasions because the person, someone would call and then the person would pick up and leave just because that's what they did. And it took a while to finally get the services to this person. But again, I think if you had a more quicker response, that particular individual probably would have got assistance much sooner than not. So my hope is that as you guys are evolving the program, there's something we can do to improve the response times because it's not an emergency issue. It's just a matter of actually, you know, making the contact before they slip away. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, we certainly, we can bring back with the next presentation those response times. I think you will see that they are not um, extremely long. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Mendoza. Thank you. Great job to staff in getting those 80 um, beds opened up at the Navigation Center. My question is, uh, do you have a timeline as to when m more beds will become open or when, when we can start using the facilities and eventually use up and fill it with um, 
with the uh, homeless um, individuals so that we can put it to full use. Um, I believe by the end of June, we will have the permanent certificate of occupancy, which will scale it up to capacity for 200. And then the second story of it, we, we were, first we were gonna place it on hold, but we have continued to make the improvements up there, which, which will add an additional 100. So it will be up for 300 individuals in the shelter, um, with the vast majority of that occurring by the end of this month. Oh, wonderful, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Seeing no other comments, I simply want to say um, thank you to staff, uh, number one, for, for getting this. And I know it's been a while, um, but I do want to give a special shout out to Ken Gaminsky, who I know uh, did a lot of work on his own uh, and his team to try to accelerate the construction. I know we've had some bumps in the road, but it really, you know, at this point, we're able to do, you know, these many, um, uh, you know, these many beds but the idea is to get up to 300 eventually. So um, we'll be able to help a lot more people. Um, please, I know I don't see him here, but uh, let him know that uh, we certainly appreciate his work because it's been a long time uh, the, for, for the council to be expecting this to be done. So um, that being said, I think that's it for this presentation. I